this is everything I wanted. Oh my God, it's that, that voice again. We're in progress. <laughs> We're burning in progress. <laughs> I wonder who they chose to make that voice. I always think about voices. Yeah. You know, like the, the person who reads all the trailer, like the movie trailer voice, like that, that's a person's voice. Yeah. Or the movie phone guy, like that voice. Yeah. And now we are all going to know this Zoom recording, like the consent voice, which I would hope is actually, would be a more inviting voice. Like if we're trying to model more consent and consensuality in our culture, and then the voice of consent is this, like it's just of information. Like I'm just recording in progress. Like I'm just gonna yell at you what is happening. I'm not actually gonna ask you. <laughs> and then I will passive aggressively make you press a button to say, is this okay with you? Anyway, I have lots of thoughts on this consent process that are coming to light right now. It's a it's a good point. I wonder, I wonder if they make it purposely abrupt so that you don't um so it doesn't like fade into the background. Oh my goodness, my, my cat has decided that he's gonna start. Let me see if I can move the camera so you can see him. He's yeah. trying to no, I can't. That's as low as it can go. Um, he's trying to like rub his face on the microphone. So if you that is hilarious. hear that, you you or listeners, that's what it is. He's made himself actually. I'm gonna take a picture. He's made himself very, very comfortable here. I hear that's, the purring. This is great. <laughs> he's like, I will be uh heard but not seen. Yeah. You know how um, they, they used to tell kids you should be seen but not heard? He's the opposite. He's like, you yeah. will hear my presence like a looming god of sorts. But <laughs> This is so perfect that we're doing this. So, so hi, Leo. This is Leo. Leo hi. is amazing. <laughs> this is the Mojo Show. That's what it's called. And I just want to talk to the most interesting people I know on the planet. Like that's really the premise and I have a lot of fun and explore things, whatever comes up. Everything I do, I think naturally re revolves around creativity, creative process and philosophy, um, deep like insight work, <laughs> transcendental states of meditation, which I am now starting to tap into, which is kind of crazy, like psychedelic, self-induced psychedelic mind states. So what, we are this now, we are doing this now, which is exciting. And, and Leo is a fucking rock star and we're gonna do this, Aww. we're doing this on Zoom. And this is going to go on audio as well. Um, so I'll try. You are actually more the podcast expert here. I've only done this ever over um, audio only recording, which is how yeah. I'm very comfortable interacting with people just with their voices because I can get a lot from someone's voice. We were talking earlier about voice. Um, so for me, the mind connection happens very easily through just voice. So I don't always think about what I'm doing or saying or, how, or what I look like because I get deep in that. Um, but yeah, if there's times I might like refer to visual things and then forget that people are listening. So you don't have a job here, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Your job is just to be you and have fun. But I'm thinking about like, what will Leo do? Um, so we'll see. But I'm so glad you're here. How did we meet? Just, I love the freaking story of how we met. Yeah, what's your, I, what's your I story? love it too. It's great. And I'm, I'm so honored to, to be here and to be considered one of an interesting person you want to talk to because I think you're one of the most interesting people I know so I'm glad that the feeling there is mutual um so like like Raina said I yeah it, this is an audio medium which is good because I'm going to constantly be swatting my hands because with my cat being here a second ago now there's cat hair floating around everywhere so I'm going to be like swatting oh it God. away I'm like trying That's to funny. keep it from it's like a game I'm trying to keep the cat hair from falling into my tea which is probably <laughs> disgusting to think about for people that don't have pets and par for the course for people who do have pets <laughs> I love it just on that I feel like I should just make this a full audio and video show because I think it'll be so fun um I want to do like stretching with people or whatever. Like if I need to get up and go do a thing. Oh, that'd be we, great. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we curate ourselves a lot yeah. for others. And this is kind of, which is fine if we do it intentionally, but sometimes it sneaks up on us and then we're very tired um, and angry <laughs> and disappointed and not sure why. So all I'm saying is full permission for whatever, um, for both of us. Great. And for everyone so listening and for everyone here. How does that sound? That sounds great to me. Um, Ooh, let's do it. Cool. So, What's yeah, your cat's so, name? 
Uh, his name is Raja, like <gasps> the tiger in Aladdin. That's cute. Yeah, that's where he got when he was. He's he doesn't so much now, but when he was a baby, his stripes were really predominant. You can't really see him as much now. So I was like, oh, I want to give him like a tiger esque name. And you know, millennial Disney baby, all the things. <laughs> oh, oh, here's his face a little bit. Look up, look up. Oh, hi. Sneak peek at that's Raja. Cute. Cute. If I if I try to pick him up, he'll make my life miserable later. Um, but anyway, how we met. Uh, we met. So I, la- for most of last year, I was hosting my own podcast called the Leo Yaki Show. That's my name, Leo Yaki, and. I, I started it because I had like rage quit my job in tech early in the year and I had burnt out really badly. And I said, I'm not going back to tech. I am, I'm done forever. This field is toxic. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I have like a year's worth of savings to figure out my next step. And so I started my podcast mostly to do like informational interviews with people that I thought were interesting. And, um, I decided at one point that I was going to kind of try to monetize it. Uh, And in that process, I started kind of joining like webinars and other little things to kind of get like tips and tricks on how to monetize a podcast. I joined this webinar from someone who was hosting one of those types of events. And it was one of those webinars where you could like be in the comments, like chatting and stuff like that. And Raina was, was in the comments, like just kind of, kind of just, you know, being the life of the party via chat, uh, just a lot of fun. And so. Um, My name wasn't even Raina. I came in disguise. I go to parties in disguise all the time and then have a great time and I can leave and I can choose whether people actually know who I am or not it's great fun because remember my name was perkins i re- that's right i was like i don't remember what your name was but you're my right it was P- not reina that's it my, took one a of my while. stage names is perkins it, okay <laughs> yeah it took it took a while before i learned that your name was actually reina but yeah you you were life of the party we exchanged instagram handles and have kind of just been like in touch ever since we had a very long, you, you mentioned before you really like audio. We had a very long phone conversation, not long after meeting and kind of learned a little bit more about each other's life paths. And you were one of the last guests on my podcast before I retired it because I came full circle. I'm actually back in tech. Uh, I retired the podcast because it had kind of served its purpose Although, you know what, Raina, just yesterday I woke up and I was getting, I was like, I feel this creative itch again. I almost feel like I want to do a podcast again. So I'm wondering (laughs) if this will like satisfy that enough or if I'm going to get like back into it again, because, you know, for, for me, one of the things that came out of like learning how to like monetize a podcast was like increasing my social media presence. And that ultimately manifested itself into this like TikTok presence where it ended up having nothing to do with the podcast and learning what people do to like find fulfillment in their careers and stuff. It ended up being me talking about like my identity as this like black mixed race trans man and ultimately having a lot of followers that were like younger than me. They're like college age. And I kind of feel like I have these, this like community of like little trans siblings that are like all people of color. And it's like, yeah, it's really nice. I like love this community. Um, but I don't remember why I brought that up. Maybe it was just a humble brag. I don't know. I ended up getting, no, it's great. No, please. I'm filling me with joy to hear this. It's like, I have goosebumps all over my body. Yeah, because we're like the shepherds of small, queer, strange, artisticish communities, like margin. You know, we're, we're like we're people who live on the edge of things, at the intersection of things. Yeah. Um, and I think it is okay for us to start naming that and like owning that. I think that's where I am right now. I'm like starting to be able to own um, the fact that we are doing this in our own yeah. ways and it is okay like you don't have to be I mean you can be sorry if you want but we have a choice to also own it and it's a hard thing to do because we've been trained to not own any of the things on so many fronts yeah so you are allowed here if you want to practice owning it even you may do that here if that feels safe and welcoming to you 
I, I appreciate that. I've been, I've been thinking a lot about that myself. Like, you know, that it, it sounds kind of like imposter syndrome, like what you're talking about a little bit. Like I, I'm like learning. Okay. So let me put it like this. I, I don't know if you felt this way. Cause you like your, Oh, this is okay for me to say like your, your queer journey is a relatively new one. I have only been, you know, transitioning um, and out as a trans man for a few years uh, and I grew up like in a small town, like didn't have a lot of exposure to not only just queer culture, but also black culture because I was, ra- I'm, I'm mixed and I was raised mostly by my white family. And so, you know, I was, I was in this like black meetup at work and the icebreaker question is like, what's your favorite food at the cookout? And I was like, I've never really been to a cookout. I was raised by white people, you know, and, and what was cool was that it was a, like wide representation of the diaspora. So like there were other people that didn't really have cookout experience for other reasons, which was kind of interesting, but mm. I would approach things like that and feel like I'm not enough of my identity because I can't like, I can't, you know, I, I don't have some of these shared experiences but the reality is that, you know, I am, I am black, I am queer, I am trans and regardless, regardless of what experiences I have or haven't had and that like feeling like I'm not enough. I don't know. It, com- it comes, I feel like from this weird, like need for like accreditation that I feel like mm-hmm. is like rooted in like white supremacy. i like, like mm-hmm. we hold the information and if you don't have, mm-hmm. and if you don't have access to it, then you're like, inherently not enough but like I am who I am regardless and I'm like wanting to learn I I actually just kind of had this realization this morning but I want to learn to like see see those opportunities see them as opportunities to be like curious and be like oh my gosh like I've been doing this all on my own and here's this opportunity to like have shared experience to like maybe like lessen the burden of constantly feeling like I'm the only one like feeling like I'm the only one is also like it's, it's a symptom of like individualism and exceptionalism that's also rooted in white supremacy. And I, I'm not the only one, like we are marginalized. There's less of us, we are a minority, but we are still also a community. There's still a lot of us. And that was what was so beautiful about my TikTok experience was being able to kind of enter this world where it's like, I have thousands of people that follow me that are just like me. And we're out here, we might be separated geographically, but we are out here. And that's the cool thing about technology is that those geographical distances are becoming less and less relevant and we can find each other and we can like build beautiful things together or at least like give each other the strength to like then go back out into the world that is like very much so like still dominated by cultures that are determined to oppress us. And I don't know, it's just, it's a really beautiful thing. That is wonderful. I'm very glad you're having this experience. And the fact that, I mean, I think following your creative heart is something that I cannot recommend strongly enough. And when it is cultivated intentionally, right? When we put awareness into like, this is something that is important to me. This is a value. I'm going to create space for it, right? It is actually a top priority for me at this point. Um, and there's so much about that that feels still I have parts that carry, you know, some like that's bad or that's wrong or you should be doing other things or your, your life has to look like this to be whatever, acceptable, um, successful, sustainable, laudable in any way, whatever, yeah. worthy in any way. And the surprising thing I'm finding is that the more I prioritize my creative heart, and am able to articulate to myself and then to others, sometimes simultaneously. This, yeah, I don't have an order to things either. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't work linearly. And I think people like us, I don't want to assume, but I know people who have minds like mine often will work in kind of a divergent fashion, right? Like we'll, whatever the opposite of linear is. Yeah. Um, like parallel in series and parallel is how we think about it from an electrical engineering point of view. <laughs> <laughs> Um, And the more I allow myself to exist in the ways that feel natural, which comes with a lot of unconditioning or deconditioning because we don't know, right? This this idea that I'm doing something and it is artificial and I'm doing something that is natural. We are 
fine as we are in any given moment. We know what we know. Yeah. And there's this kind of like a culture of like, it's like an aspirational culture. It's the same with like, I don't know if you think of fast fashion, it's like you always got to have the next thing, keeping yeah. up with the Joneses, you know, staying on trend and like constantly changing because whatever you are and have and do in this moment is not enough. And so you're always chasing and grasping and grinding and hustling. And we've learned that we've incorporated that. I never really glommed onto it, but I spent a lot of energy resisting it also. I didn't even realize yeah. how much energy I spent just resisting it and questioning it. I'm like, this does not feel right. And I'm grappling on the inside with like being split. Like I'm called, I feel like this doesn't feel right, but I don't know what my options are. I don't know what my choices are. And so I've been kind of secretly mischievously as a child and then more and more visibly as an, uh, an adult, if you can call me that, look at this background. We have a sparkly <laughs> rainbow background here. Yeah. I mean, um, I live like a child now who's able yeah. to drive and buy wine at the corner store. <laughs> so I don't know <laughs> if this is always a good idea, but um, I'm still here. And I think it's a good idea. I'm do- it's the best idea I've had so far. And I keep getting better ideas and acting on them. So I trust that I'm living the best way I know how in this given moment and learning to just be okay with that is a shit ton of work. Yeah. Just being okay with yourself as you are in this moment and seeing all the shit that comes up when you just sit with that thought. I don't sit with thoughts, just by the way, I I say sitting with thoughts, but usually for me, it involves (laughs) circling my very small apartment, like over (laughs) and over again. There's a tiny little like table in the middle that's all, you know, ratty and battered up. Um, And frequently, I mean, I'll spend like a week, this is what my life looks like. I'm like, is this kind of a stereotype rock star monk lifestyle? It's in between the two. Like I'll be, you know, smoking ganja and wearing my red, robe bathrobe though it looks like a monk's robe but it's a bathrobe with like (laughs) holes in the armpits you know what i'm saying like it's old school and shuffling i shuffle with my like head bowed and my hands behind my back yeah just an insight like i'm just going round and round the house like having these amazing awakenings they feel amazing and i'm trusting that they are the more i share them people are like oh my god i needed to hear that right now yeah it opens up something right so I'm i'm talking about this now as a uh, access to the psychedelic mind. The psychedelic mind is like the subconscious mind that has an infinite capacity to create. It has infinite perspectives. It's able to see things from all sides and angles. And this allows us to start getting very quickly other ways of seeing our current condition. Just allowing us to have that experience of access to different point of views. It's like a very top, it's like a, it's like a very um, stratospheric view of the self and suddenly you're like I have a bunch of choices here that didn't ever seem like choices like this is just how I am is how I grew up right I'm this impassioned (laughs) uh talkative over expressive you know just seething mass of emotions um and I thought that there was no other way to be and now I know that that way is fine and I can allow it and express it and I don't feel overrun or or, or um, overwhelmed by it. It doesn't drown. I don't drown in it anymore. I can. It's like it's like learning to surf. I feel like I've spent my life learning to kind of surf, and I feel like I've reached some level of decent mastery now of surfing, kind of the the inside of me, <laughs> as yeah. it were, right? And I'm living this life now, and this and it's happening very fast. It feels like it's happening very fast. I'm meeting really interesting people like you. Right. Never in a million years would I have had this on my life plan. Right. Ever. Like, is any aspect of your life right now, Neil, was that part of any script or narrative or option you were presented as a child? I am curious. No, absolutely not. How the fuck do you find your way here is what I'm saying. (laughs) Right. Right. Well, I think, I think everything that you just said, I think is like a beautiful testimony to like self-acceptance and self-discovery because that was, that was the thing that I've kind of learned on my journey this last year. Cause my journey this last year in 2021, gosh, we're already like 
God, we're recording this on March 1st. How are we already in the third month of 2022 is beyond me. But uh, in 2021, <laughs> a big part of my journey was figuring out like, okay, there are some people that do seem to be like happy and fulfilled with what they're doing with their lives. How, how, how do they feel this way? And like the shortest, most concise answer to that is the more you're able to be like true to your authentic self, the more likely you are to be fulfilled and happy with everything that you're doing with your life, with your like career, how you're spending time with your family, like how you show up in the world, all of it. And so, so often in so many ways, in, in so many areas of life, we are shown like one path and we're shown this is the way to do it. As far as you just asked, like, is any part of my life, what was, you know, an option that was presented to me as a kid? No, what was presented to me as a kid was you get good grades, you go to college, you get a career, you buy a house, you get married, you have babies, and then those babies repeat the cycle and it goes on over and over and over again into infinity. You know, you retire and then you die and hopefully you get to spend some time with your grandbabies before you die, period, done. And yeah. the reality is that there's so many, especially nowadays, there's so many different ways to even go about like that, like, you know, even if you want a career, like what does that career look like? How does your mind work? Does college work for you? Do you need college? You know, as far as figuring out who you are and being with your thoughts, that really resonates with me that you like pace around your house. What often happens for me is I'll like stare at myself in the mirror and then just like get lost in thought, which feels on the surface, like an incredibly vain thing to do. But what it's doing for me is it's like forcing me to stay at least somewhat grounded in self. Like I have to like see myself with my own eyes. Like, you know, people talk about like meditations where you like kind of do body scans and things like that. And if I'm closing my eyes, like I can't really do that. I have to like physically, I have to actually see my body. So I'll like stare at myself in front of the mirror and like my mind will have the same thing where, where that you were talking about, where you kind of are able to see things from different perspectives and it feels like the mind is really opening itself up. Like that happens for me there. But when it comes to being with our thoughts, we are taught that the way to do that is to sit with your legs crossed, your eyes closed, take deep breaths. And if you're not doing it like that, then you must not be meditating. There's other people that get into a meditative state when they go for runs. There's other people that get into meditative states when they go out into nature. There's other people who get into meditative states when they're doing a really repetitive task, like the dishes or laundry or something like yes. that. Yes. And yes, like, yes, yes, yes. This is like, uh, for everyone listening, this is our ad break for alt meditation. Okay, Leo and I are pimping. <laughs> <laughs> I've been talking about this a lot. I've been talking about it a lot. I was shaming myself for the longest time. Yeah. Because you should, first of all, what your morning ritual should, like, you should have a morning ritual and it has to look like this. You got to journal, you got to get up right away, you got to exercise at five o'clock in the morning. You don't look at your phone for the first hour, it's bad, blah, blah, blah. and then sit yeah. on the cushion, get your butt in that cushion and all of this stuff. And I was like, shit, I'm not doing any of this. And I feel fucking great. I, lo yeah. <laughs> I love what's happening for me. So what am I doing? Right, so there's a kind of looking like you're describing, but I... I don't do it with a mirror, but I do it like in other ways, right? Yeah. So your well, meditation is a form of insight, I think, and acceptance, right? What practice brings you into the head state? Who gives a fuck, right? But well, some people do. And so, and then they beat themselves up about like not doing it the right way, which is the same. It's perpetuating the same shit. Yeah. Um, and so when we get creative about how might I, I like to ask myself, how might I question? So I'll ask myself, I did that, I started doing this recently. How might I already? be meditating what mm. am i already doing that gets me into a state even if it is for a split second can i notice what i'm doing and how i'm becoming aware of being in a meditative state right to so the awareness so what is the action and what is the awareness of the action like how do i sense it in my body how do mm. i sense it in my mind like what am i looking for that's giving me the information that I'm doing the thing, not the picture of the thing, which is sitting on the cushion with the eyes closed, but the thing itself. What is that a feeling? Is it a mind state? Can it be induced? In how many ways can it be induced? How do I know I'm inducing it? How would I know what they're saying and what I'm understanding is the same? Yeah. You don't know. Am I doing it right? How are you going to know? Right. And, and the way to know if we're doing it right 
I think to your point is like we we have to check in with ourselves because for some people that sitting still eyes closed is going to work for them none and of my people none of my people do that <laughs> yeah I, that that doesn't surprise me that honestly doesn't surprise me because I feel like there's also I don't know I mean it, it feels like there's a little bit of like it, it how do I want to say this it's like kind of coming to me in the moment okay so the idea that there's like one way to meditate, which this is just like one example that we're pulling out of the air. Like you can see this with everything. There's only one way to exercise. There's only one way to have a career. There's only one way to mm -hmm. experience fashion. There's only one way to consume media, like all of these things. But we're focusing right now on meditation. Um, when there's only one way to do it, which again, we've been taught like the eyes closed, deep breath, all that stuff. I was really deep into that, like super intense, like you got to have that morning routine, like spend a few hours a day doing exactly this prescription, like meditate, read, read something productive to like, you know, grow as a human, you know, it can't just be some, like some fluff. It's gotta be something with some substance to oh it. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. It's like, yeah, like self-awareness addiction, right? It's a little bit, it can get 100%. kind of compulsive and like, uh, what is the word for like, not didactic, but rigid, rigid is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Right? Um, and prescriptive and I'm not, yeah. Exactly. And so that happened. Yeah. Well, the, the one thing that that was good for in that moment was like, I was so like untethered that it mm -hmm. at least brought me some like structure that I needed, but that was pretty much all it was good for. Like I wasn't actually growing, but it was allowing me to like get a little bit more tethered so that I could kind of mm -hmm. branch back out into like figuring out what was important for me. So sometimes these things like have, have a time and a place and a space but I think it's equally important to like be able to recognize when that time and place and space has like run its course. I mean, this is basically internal family systems. This is what I practice. This is what oh, nice. I coach around. This is a big piece of how it works is that we have all of that happening inside us, right? So the structure is helpful and it was probably very helpful at a time uh, when it was needed. Like when one is feeling unmoored and untethered and completely at sea, some boundaries and some limits help. And then yeah. if those boundaries and limits get too rigid and too narrow, then we don't have creativity or freedom or rest um, available to us. And then we feel very squeezed and suffocated. And then we start becoming cognizant of the presence of the boundaries. We're like, why do I feel so squeezed or suffocated or stressed out? And then you start noticing which boundaries are there? How big are they? How tall are they? How wide are they? Where did they come from? I, did I agree to them? Might I have agreed to them unconsciously at some point because somebody yeah. else passed them on with good intentions, always with good intentions. If you trace any action or behavior back far enough, you will find a good intention. Yeah. And if you don't, you just have to keep peeling and peeling and peeling to find it. You will find it. If you trust that you will find it. This is part of my process also. It's like, if you start with that premise, don't stop till you find it. And you will find so much gold along the way. You'll find so much forgiveness for yourself and for others who have created this and passed it on and are burdened by it themselves. And when you start finding, it's not even like the wideness is the best and the narrowness is the worst. It's like, I now have a handle on the dial. Yeah. Like I can dial it in and I know what my choices are. I know what my limits are. I know in any given moment, whether like I feel like surfing a big wave or I want to just cruise on a gentle ocean and I have agency in that. And you start experiencing the agency because we are told this, but we don't know what it feels like. We don't know what it looks like. We're just, there's this like nebulous idea of having ownership of your life or having agency or having, you know, speaking up or no, setting your limits, setting your boundaries. I'm like, how do we know what we want? But if we don't know what our choices are fully, yeah. if we don't know what's available to us and what works for us, and we have to know ourselves and get to know ourselves, and we're always evolving, right? So it's a continuous process without the FOMO of like, oh my God, I'm going to miss out, or like, I need to catch up. The FOMO and the catching up are like either side of like just being in the present. Yeah. Which is the hardest thing to do because it involves doing nothing. 
right. which is very hard. Yeah. I do I, a lot of nothing now. It's great. It's hard. I, right. I, and well, I think it's especially hard when we don't know how, how being, you know, doing nothing and being one with our thoughts, like how that works for us specifically. You know, there was, I, I just read this really cool book called, called Rooted. It like kind of talks about the like intersection of like nature and spirituality mm. and philosophy. It's really, really interesting book. Um, I read it for a book club at work, but they talked at one point about, there was a study. I wish I remember the name of the study, but essentially uh, people were administered a shock so that they knew what it felt like and they knew what they were signing up for. And then they were told to sit in a room doing nothing for 15 minutes, one, five, 15 minutes. And they could either sit there and do nothing, or they had the ability to self-administer these shocks and something like 85 or 90% of the people chose to shock themselves because it was better than like sitting there doing nothing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What? Yeah. And, and again, it's like they did one ahead of time. So they already knew like how bad it felt. It wasn't like, oh, it can't be that. Bad. You know what I mean? Like they still chose it because it's so hard for people to just sit and like be with themselves. And I don't know. It's like it 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 takes practice. Like I feel very I feel very fortunate that I've like ended up in a space where like I've done enough of the trial and error that for me, like, I do feel comfortable being with my thoughts and being in my head space. And oftentimes I will just like sit and be with my thoughts for like a very long time, like no phone or whatever. But I know that it doesn't have to look that specific way of like following my breath and stuff like that. Like if I did that, I can't even do that for 10 minutes. But like, if I just kind of like let my mind kind of wander freely, mm -hmm. I mean, I can do that for I don't know, like an hour. Like I can do it for a real long time. Like, it, mm -hmm. you know, I do this like, for hours. I can do it for hours now. I haven't, yeah. Uh, but I'll go and wander in cemeteries. I'll yeah. do walks. Like we, when we met, right? When we yeah. finally met in person after I felt like we, <laughs> we started with the origin story and it's still an ongoing origin story. It's so great. Yeah. We have so many, we've met once in person. And I feel like I have this relationship a lot frequently with people from all over and all kinds of people, but there's obviously a common thread. And sometimes I try to find the common thread and sometimes I'm like, oh, it's me. <laughs> I'm the right. common thread. I just leave it at that. It's fine. Like, I don't need to know anymore at this point. I just try and explain it because it can't possibly be me. Um, and I was like, no, it's just, it's me. Uh, I'm right. an interesting enough person to attract interesting enough people, like really interesting people um, who are excited to talk to me. I'm like, that, that, what? That's been fun. Um, and difficult and yeah we yeah that seems like walk. a really power the, yeah that seems like a really powerful realization to have because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of having the same like oh wait you're right like mm -hmm. same you know like mm -hmm. I've same because I've met a lot of interesting people and had a lot of very interesting experiences in my life even the ability to come and see you where you are you know is just mm -hmm. a result of a lot of interesting things kind of all falling into place yeah. Which actually brings us back to, so you were talking about this community, this wonderful community that you are shepherding, that you've yeah. built. And through that, which we went in this wonderful little segue. I don't even think any of them are segues because there's no main path. I just like wandering with you. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, and we talked about owning the sense of ownership and then the imposter syndrome, right? The, the owning of yourself, really. And everything yeah. you are and everything you do and everything you choose not to do or to do differently. Um, and part of that story has to do with what happened after that on TikTok. So you have this community and then you met someone. Yeah. And I mean, again, it's like I, I, I have a lot of thoughts about meeting someone on social media, but it, it's interesting because this is this is the first time where I feel like I've met someone and I was just, they just happened to walk in on me being totally and completely myself. Like I've never felt like so happy and confident with where I was in my life as I was when I, you know, met this person and, you know, like I, and, and it's really, I was actually, I was just thinking about this last night, actually. I, 
Okay, so there was there was a trend. I showed you the video, but there was a trend on TikTok where, uh, you know, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with TikTok, it's you know the, there'll be sounds that trend, and you can kind of make your own. It's it's kind of like an iterative form of art where like people will all make their own interpretation of a video, like using the same audio, um, and it could be music, it could be someone talking, whatever. So this one happened to be like the theme of the trend was you know, you were being presented with someone that was supposed to be like a good match for you. Most of them were romantic. Some of them were like a doctor finding like an ideal patient, like other, other scenarios like that. But it was like, there'd be three things that made them like a perfect match for you. And then one thing at the end that was like, it was a joke, it, like jokingly, it was a deal breaker. So my deal breaker thing was going to be that the person was a Scorpio because my best friend and I, kind of have this like little inside joke thing where like we both dated Scorpios in the past where like really long time ago, like 10 plus years ago where it didn't go well. And ever since then, we're always like no Scorpios. And like, if we did, we both have dated Scorpios since then. We're like, ah, oh, I don't know. There's Scorpio. So it's just like a thing that we do. It's just very, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's just all in good fun. So I knew that that was going to be like my deal breaker thing at the end. And then I was like, okay, what are like the good match pieces? And the three things that I came up with were um, I'm sober. So one of the big things that came that, so one of the things I said was like that they are sober or like drink really minimally. Um, Cause everybody that I've ever dated in the past, obviously to match me has also been a very heavy drinker substance user um, that they like practice actively practice and really value kindness and uh, cause I've actually been with people who like found my uh, kindness to be like baffling. I'm like, that's just not a good match. Like, that's fine. That's just not a good match. And then also um, like they've done work around like their like relationship around like race and gender because you know, like being trans, being black, like, you know there's a lot of inner work that I've had to do around like kind of figuring out my place within this like very white, very heteronormative world. And it's so, like, I don't want to like have to do like a lot of heavy lifting with like educating my partner, which is also something that I've had to do in the past. Um, and mm -hmm. so my like now girlfriends commented on that. She's a Scorpio rising. <laughs> so her <laughs> comment was like, I'm a Scorpio rising. Da, 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 da. Like, is that okay? And so we kind of had this like back and forth and then we end up in the DMs and then we're texting and we're FaceTiming. She happens to live in the same city as Reina. So like we, I got to meet, I met up with her for like a quick weekend. Then I came later for a longer trip, which is when I met Reina. And now, you know, COVID approving, like I'm like trying to go out there about once a month and, you know, might be moving. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's still very early, but the interesting thing that I realized last night was even though this was a silly little TikTok, like those three bullet points of like, what is like important for me in a partner, that was really the first time that I was like, wait, what actually would it look like if someone is like perfect for like, what are actually some qualities that are like really, really important to me? Like practicing kindness is very important to me. Like knowing where you where you stand in relation to others when it comes to like race and gender and how these systems kind of work in our world is like very important to me because it's a big part of, of my life and who I am as a person and drinking like minimally you know like there's a big difference even if someone that I were to date is someone who drinks like there's a big difference between I drink on special occasions versus like I use drinking as like a coping mechanism and like mm -hmm. no judgment whatsoever because that has fully been me for a very long time like I barely got sober less than a year ago but Actually, it's just should. thank you but it just it's just we are just like the way that we deal with conflicts or hardships or challenges is just not going to be aligned and I know that that is just like not something that I'm looking for. So in her like saying that thing about being a Scorpio rising, I had this click moment of like, oh, wait, if she's saying that, that implies that like the other things she like 
are like a match for her. Oh, I just got that. She didn't say anything else about the other things. Like, yeah, she's assume these are everything is perfect. It's, this is I'm just gonna give you the exception. Oh, this is clever. Exactly. Ooh, this exactly. Is of a playful, intelligent person who's paying attention and like observing the details. It says so much. What you don't say says so much. What you say and the fact that you've crystallized your sense of self and what you want into like those three points plus this uh, deal breaker. To me, this is where I think people sometimes overlook or aren't aware of what goes into being able to say those three plus one things. Yeah, It's a lifetime of exploration, of heartbreak, of loss, of grief, of trauma, of joy, of insight, of, you know, fear and uncertainty and all of these things, deep inner exploration and, you know, falling down and getting back up again, being laughed at, pointed at, humiliated, hurt, uh, hurting others in some way or the other, causing pain, being on the receiving end of pain, being lost and lonely and feeling unloved and unworthy. Like I could go on. Yeah. And all of that crystallized into these three plus one points that you put into a few seconds on the internet. It was an eight second video. Eight seconds. <laughs> but what I, no, but what I appreciate here, Leo, is that your entire life to crystallize that into an eight second clip that found you the love of your fucking life. Yeah. Is not a small thing. This is a testament to the value of this work. Do you know how many people have no idea why they're swiping left or right on the apps? They're ending up with random people in their home, butt naked, you know, <laughs> drunk and eating all the snacks and need to be driven home because they spent their last whatever on the whiskey or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. middle age, and I, I'm I'm gonna be 45 soon. I'm talking, we nice. are like. Right. So, and my, the, you know, I have all kinds of people around me. I have actually the, the, the age span is very large, very <laughs> large, very large. And all of them interesting from children to like retirees and beyond. Um, I could never discern age very well. I think I have a thing with numbers, uh, which I'm learning is called dyscalculia. It's like mm. dyslexia, but with numbers. I'm, some numbers I'm fine with. Like I don't have, I was good at math, but for different reasons. Um but measuring like a room full of people or time passing, or I can't tell the difference between all the, um, the highway numbers to me are a blur. Like they all around here yeah. start with nine. Like I see them as shapes, but I can't, I can't compute them conceptually as like meaning anything. They don't have any, they don't hold meaning for me. Music has a lot of meaning for me. It unfolds almost immediately. So I can understand something through music without any, words or explanation or theory or anything. So it's a, like, it feels like different sides of the brain or just a totally, this is where I discovered my, my neurodiversity. It was like, wow, I do not understand the world yeah. quite in the same way that a lot of people around me did and do. Um, so now a lot of things make sense. How did I get here? I do not know. Um, Discalcul discalculia. 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 I don't even know how to say it. It doesn't roll off the tongue easily. Um, but it's like this weird thing with numbers. Oh, yes, naked on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So I'm saying, so the point is like the work, which really feels like play. I, I wish it was mm -hmm. called something else, but then I will just, we can just recast the meaning of work. Like why work so hard to make another word? We'll just, we'll just, we'll just take back the meaning of work and make it mean play. Um, has for you, resulted like this is an actual real life results I, fucking, I love pragmatic results like yes we do all this heady stuff and inside stuff and everyone's like I don't have time for that that's a luxury that's a privilege and I'm like flip the triangle yo like it's actually it's backwards it's backwards yeah. it's ass backwards and it's very hard like I can't convince anyone I don't have the energy to convince anyone I was probably resistant unconsciously to it for the longest time um, I don't know, probably not actually. I've been curious like this since I was very young. So now it just feels like doing more of what I what I'm naturally um inclined to. But it feels like doing that has gotten you without, and you didn't have an agenda. I want to just name that you right. did not have this agenda. You were open, you were curious and expressive 
and deeply thoughtful. You sought out wisdom through books, through podcasts, through taking risks, through asking questions, through talking to strangers, to creating stuff on your own, putting yourself out and seeing who responds, right? There's a lot of vulnerability, especially given all the fucking boxes that you check, you know, yeah. and then some, right? We live between the boxes, people like us. Yeah. Right. So that sense of being untethered one's whole life, you don't belong anywhere, like an orphan feeling. Right. Yeah. And you're looking around, you're like, I have a family, I have food, I have a house, I have like, what the fuck is the problem? Right. And right? I talk a lot about invisible moves. I mean, my band made a song we released um, in January, our second single, and it's called Invisible Wounds. And it's made from this place. Like, oh, I nice. don't understand why the pain feels so heavy, why it hurts so bad. Right. Is my intensity a problem? Is my everything about me a problem? Is my race, my culture, is my gender, is my left handedness, is my artistic mind problematic? What is problematic? Why am I such a problem for everybody around me? It seems. Yeah. And then turning that into a question of are there places in which I feel less problematic? What are those places? Might I go find those places? Mm. May I inhabit those places? How do I know the difference between the feeling? Yeah. What happens in my body when I'm in those places versus these places? And people like me, this might ring true for you, are very much in our heads because our bodies have not been safe places to be. And the world mm. has not been safe for our bodies to be in. And so the head can go into the past and could go into the future, right? Yeah. Ideation and anxiety happen about like this future thoughts. And there's some equivalent that happens with the past thoughts. Um, rumination, like guilt and right. shame and stuff is like rooted in the past is how I think about it. So our heads, but they, they can also escape. We can escape through our heads. So people like us often are overthinkers. We live like from the neck up a lot. We have great ideas and we also have terrible ideas. Right. <laughs> and everything in between, they're all just ideas. But we haven't... So we often are disconnected or dissociated from our bodies because our bodies haven't been safe places to be. And I'm sure you have lots to say about this. I don't want to presume, and it's a lot of labor also that I'm sure you've done a lot of. So I want to call out, you are not here for the boxes that you check. You are here because I see you from the inside out as a luminous human being. Thank you. And that's I all I care that. about. That's all I care about. Like, that's how I might just introduce you in the intro of this show. Like, yeah. I'm talking to Leo Yaki, a luminous fucking human being. End of fucking story. Like, I don't have any... That's it. That is enough. Yeah, I love that. I appreciate that. And I, I think that that's a really good point that you brought up earlier. It's like, we, we are kind of taught to believe that, like, we're not safe in our bodies and learning, learning where do we feel safe, like that, that is kind of the journey in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And that is in a lot of ways, just like what TikTok was for me. It's like, I was able to find my people and I was able to like express my truth and be like, wow, like other people also feel this. Like I can fully just like be myself here and be open. And there's so many eight second videos that are like culminations of years of work you know mm -hmm. I have this one where I'm like you know looking at pictures of my ancestors being like do you say black lives matter and it's like here's the complication of being like mixed in like an eight second video and it was and people wow. were just like this is hilarious I love it because I feel the same way you know and it, it's I don't know it's just it's I feel like I'm just gonna say this here like I, I feel like for me I feel like for whatever reason, and, and maybe it is because we don't fit into the boxes and like those, I think the more that you fit into the boxes, the harder it is to discern like what is your truth versus what is not your truth. Um, because so much of the world was made to fit for you. So it's like, hard to tell like wait I do I even like this do I even want this mm -hmm. it doesn't matter because it was made for your body to be safe and even if you don't like it mm -hmm. um it's like you know you might find like a 
piece of clothing that fits really well, but isn't exactly your style, but like it's comfortable and it's like cold outside. So I'm just going to wear this jacket, even if I don't like the way it looks like, I imagine that's what it's like to have like a lot of boxes that fit you. Like you might not even notice or care that it's not your style because it fits and your body's safe in it. Mm. And for me, I feel like I personally feel like I've always been ever since, like you keep saying, like you've been doing this your whole life. Like I've ever since I was a kid, I've just have always felt like there was this inner truth or this inner compass that has been guiding me. And because the regular boxes laid out for me didn't work for me, it was almost like the easy choice to like go, not easy in that it was like not a lot of work, but like it just seemed more acceptable to kind of just like go on my own path and follow that truth. And it's like the more now that we have the help of technology to find other people and I have like more language and vocabulary Mm -hmm. for things to like describe who I am and what my truth is that like wasn't available. I didn't even know what the word trans was, Mm. you know, when I was a kid, but I knew that there was something wrong with, or not, not wrong, but there was something different about my body and the way I presented. And, you know, I wasn't like, the girls that I grew up around, like I knew that from a very early age, I just didn't have the language for it. So it's like, I feel like I've always been guided by this inner truth. And it's just been a journey of like, it's almost been like a quest to like find the like language and people and places and things where it's like that truth within on the inside, like, where do I find that resonating on the outside? Mm -hmm. And I feel like over the past, really ever since I started transitioning. So like, with the over the last four years, but especially in the, it's like more, so it's getting more precise with each year since I mm-hmm. started transitioning, actually, now that I think about it, like, I know some of it was like from the tr- pandemic and stuff, but the reality is like with each passing year, it's like, I'm getting more and more and more precise. But I think that that opening that door of like crossing the boundaries and like, you know, going outside the box with something as, as, uh, ingrained in our culture as close to the core of this culture as gender has like really just like kind of opened up the Pandora's box for me and it's just been like I just gotten so much closer and closer and closer to my to my truth and yeah it's like the people that have come into my life as a result the people who have stayed in my life and the Mm -hmm. way that those relationships have transformed and yeah and like literally even like finding love in a place like TikTok like it's just it's all a culmination of stuff that I can like look all back to childhood and say like this has been part of the journey all along. You're an incredible human being. I am immensely pleased to know you. I'm immensely honored to be talking to you. It fills me with so much joy to know and it fills me with so much awe to know and it fills me with so much respect to know that there are people like you out in the world doing this for yourself and letting that ripple effect ripple out to those who need to hear it and all the things you've had to escape and navigate and figure out and take in and put out in this journey without any guarantee of anything, without even like, there's no goalpost, there's no no end, there's no, there's nothing. It's a a wing and a prayer existing out of love in the moment. Yeah. Right, it's a constant unfolding. And when we, I mean, this is a big part of what I teach and coach around. It is like when we discover and are able to find creativity and joy and possibility in loving the process. The outcome not only becomes unimportant, it disappears, it completely disappears. And this is where that like kind of fractal mind opens up. You're like, it is an infinite, there is no end, which can be very overwhelming, just like, right, with the structures and the boundaries we talked about. So that that infinite possibility, it's very powerful. I had this insight yesterday in the, I've been doing these like ritual baths now. Um, I have profound insights in them and I experience like extreme pleasure in my body, like in a way that I have never, it's like laughing out loud, Um, uncontrollable pleasure 
um, and euphoria. And this is now ongoing for like some time. This is not a manic phase. <laughs> I checked. This has been like three years in the making plus and then a lifetime wow. in the making plus, but it's like really dialed up. I've been doing, I know what I'm doing now um, is what it is. Just like you said, I'm getting more and more precise every every year. But for me, it happens on the daily. Sometimes it's, it's, it's now snowballing yeah. very fast. So all I'm doing is like, can I hold space for this expansion? Because it feels overwhelming. And I had this insight yesterday in the bath and I broke down crying. Um, or I woke up crying. It feels like both. It doesn't feel like a breakdown. It feels like a wake up moment. Yeah. R- realizing that the one of the reasons I can understand that everyone is like, whoa, I want that thing too. Let me rush towards it. It sounds amazing. Yes, you said it's hard, but it sounds amazing. Like, why doesn't everyone want this? It's fucking scary. Yeah. It's very powerful. I had a a glimpse yesterday and I've had glimpses in the past. I've tasted this a lot, but I had the biggest glimpse yesterday of the magnitude of this kind of infinite divine creative power. And it's like, oh, everything in me came into like, shut that shit down. It is so powerful. And you're like, I don't know where the stuff from me comes out. I don't know where my music is coming from now. I'm having these crazy insights. I make videos without even thinking about it. I'm writing stuff like almost in my sleep. And people are like, oh my God, that's what I needed to hear. Right. Yeah. And there's part of me that's terrified. I'm like, and we've seen all the death and destruction stories of people who follow this path. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's part of me that's very vigilant about that. I watch like documentaries about cult leaders and how they ended up like that. I'm like, pay fucking attention because we do not want this. And they did not start off wanting that either. Nobody does. Right. So I'm like, keep good people around you. Can you be accountable? Like I'm terrified because I, I'm also starting to talk about power and especially people like me who are, I don't even know what the fuck I am at this point. You know, I'm not Indian enough. I'm not white enough. I'm not (laughs) Western enough. I'm, I'm, I'm too everything for everything. And I love exactly how I am right now. I feel like a, a being in the in the universe is some days how I was like that's as best as specific as, as I can give you at this point yeah. um that's just what I feel like and having tasted this is very scary and I just want to acknowledge that right so you and I are folks who have been sensing the magnitude of that and we're up against it but like we also got like a wall behind us it feels like right so we're kind of have this we're compelled towards exploring this big 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 I mean, for you, you have physically changed form. Like that is a, when you experience the divine through like, I can completely transmute my whole body and gender. This is deeply ingrained for like the history of mankind. Right. Humankind. That you're like, I'm going against that, against that and saying everything is possible. That's overwhelming. So I just want to speak that for folks who are like, this feels scary and this feels big. Yes, it is scary. Yes, it is big. And yes, some of us are compelled and we're holding space because it is scary, because it is big. It is not necessary all the time either. It can become compulsive and addictive, just like other things have in the past. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, you know, that's, that's actually, I'm so glad you brought up the cult thing. So that's, that's something that's been coming up a lot for me too, is, I mean, this is where it all comes back to like really checking in with yourself. And it's like, what, you know, you're like, you're in like a phase right now where it's like, you're, you know, writing the stuff in your sleep. A lot of stuff is coming out every single day. And it's like important to know like that that's what's happening right now. If you wake up tomorrow and that inspiration, not, not that it's gone, but it's just like, things aren't coming out as easily. Then it's like, okay, now's not the time to be like putting that stuff out. Now maybe is the time to like absorb and like let that stuff like metabolize, like all of the realizations mm-hmm. from the, that past period. I think what happens in a lot of cases, and this comes again, this is part of the culture that we're in. We are in a culture that values unlimited growth, infinite growth. And I'm glad you brought this up. Yes. Yeah. It's like mm-hmm. the, the ba- basically like the end of the day, like the main mantra is like, just because you can doesn't mean you should. But it's like in my career, I went back into tech, but I am very cognizant of that like career ladder mm-hmm. shit. I'm like, I don't want anything to do with that. Like I'm happy with how much money I'm making. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like if I'm going to do something that involves growth, it's not going to be towards my career. It's going to be towards like my community. It's going to be towards the relationships in my life. It's going to be towards my 
you know, my relationship with self, mm-hmm. I don't need to expend personal resources on my career right now. But what we're taught is we should always want to be climbing, climbing, climbing. What's next? Mm-hmm. What's next? What's next? And I think mm-hmm. that what's next, what's next, what's next mindset can spill into everything, you know, mm-hmm. like with my podcast, I got to the point where it's like, well, if I keep doing my podcast, it's just to be able to say that I'm doing it. I actually feel like it's it's done what it needed to do for me creatively. If I were to go back to a podcast, it would probably be a completely different podcast mm. with a completely different theme and all of that, which I'm open to, but it's like, I can sense right now that now is not the time. So it's mm-hmm. like, well, I'm going to force, force it, keep doing it just to get mm. the listeners just for what? So Mm -hmm. I I think that in the case of these cult leaders, it's like you get to a point where it's like you have to keep growing, you have to keep building Mm. for what? And at a certain point, you you at a certain point, it's like you're doing it just for the sake of growing. And when you're growing just for the sake of growing, that becomes a power grab. And Mm -hmm. I think just like being really in tune with like, you know, those ebbs and flows, energetically speaking. You know, like, when is it time to like turn around and give back? When is it time to do all these different things? And I think that's why I like doing this work of like getting really in tune with that, like personal compass, that personal like meter Mm -hmm. is like probably the most important work we can do in our lives. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, I, the kind of scheduled nine to five, uh, unlimited growth, productivity, none of these things felt I didn't feel um, compelled towards them for a long time. I always, not always, but I think doing, following like the impulse of what is wished for, like an intuitive impulse has kind of been a precedent in my life, but I'm able to articulate it now. I didn't, there was also things I was doing that I did, I wasn't aware of. Um, And there's, you know, tomorrow or next year, there's going to be things that today I don't know and I'm doing that I'm not conscious of. Like, I know that. I don't know what I don't know yet. But my process is always like, "Hmm, I'm going to get curious about what I, how do I know what I don't know that I don't know? Um, And can I be okay also not knowing what I don't know? Can I be okay in the unknowing in this moment? It was like most days that's like, yes, I can be in the unknowing. And that's okay. I actually love being in the unknowing. That is where, that is where all, you know, that's a potential that is in the, in the, in the pre-birth that is in the, in the creative possibility. I thrive in that space. Most people get very frightened in this space. I think it's uncertain. Yeah. It's undefined. And I love it. <laughs> I've come to love it because everything comes from there. I'm like, Oh, that's the source. And it's very big and very scary, which is why touching it and tasting it. And then the thing like you might get addicted to the source is definitely yeah. there, right? Then you might be grabbing and grabbing from the source and like, then it becomes a black hole and sucks you in and by right. um, is the feel, I think, what we are trying to avoid. And so when I get to a place of like, first, can I know how to open and shut the aperture, right? The, the boundaries and the limits and the um, freedom up here. Step number one. Step number two is knowing that both will come and go. Actually, step number one is like knowing that the states can come and go. Right? Yeah. We can be happy. We can be sad. Joy and pain. They come and they ebb and they flow. Step two yeah. is that, oh, I, ha- I know where the dials are. So I can dial up one and da- down the other at will, regardless yeah. of my circumstances. Regard- this is what the important part is. This is regardless of my circumstances. Regardless of my bank balance, regardless of my weight, regardless of my age, regardless of people around me, regardless of whatever the fuck is happening, regardless of that, I have agency over the inside. And the yeah. inside agency also ripples to the outside, actually. Then you realize you have an impact by doing, be able to do that. And the third final, not final, <laughs> there's probably infinite steps, but the one I've come to now is like, how might I not be attached to have you know, turn up the joy all the time and turn on the pain. Like, if you can do it, then you must do this, right? Because I'm like, what am I scared of over here? Like, what can I just let them be and just watch the whole thing happen? Yeah. It's kind of where I'm now exploring. Like, can I not compulsively seek out happiness all the time? Like, I'm kind of over that idea, actually. Yeah. (laughs) I'm over it. Um, It's wonderful. It's a wonderful aspiration. That's, you know, level two. Like, and then now I'm in level three and like the level seven people are like, whatever. I don't know where they are. I don't care. I don't, they're, they're, un, they're invisible to me right now. Right. So that's okay. 
Yeah, that like feeling happy all the time. I mean, that becomes, I mean, one, it's like it turns into toxic positive positivity real mm-hmm. quick, but also mm-hmm. it, it becomes vapid mm-hmm. after a while. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, very boring. No, yeah. It's very boring. <laughs> it has no spice to it. It has no, I like I like sour and I like spice and I like bite. And I like some jagged edges and some roughness and some glitter and some mischief and some wickedness. Like I need some of that in my life. Um, Yeah, I've been through like various kinds of sobriety things also in and out. And I come to a point where actually earlier today, I was realizing like we there's a lot of um, defensive behavior that arises around defining what sobriety is, what self-care is or is not, what queerness is or is not, what whatever other thing is or is not. And I understand where the defensiveness comes from. This is a, it's a tricky insight maybe, but we get defensive about people who are different than us, possibly because there's a part of us that's very curious about that thing. And there's a part of us that doesn't fully trust that the decision that we have chosen, the values that we have chosen to live by, like, I don't, right, then they're, they're related. Like, I'm a little curious about that side. Does that yeah. mean I don't trust, I don't feel fully secure in my own decision? So I can't allow this creativity, this little impulse to even, or the curiosity, I'm sorry. I can't really allow the curiosity to even think about what it might be like to be trans or to be black or to be mixed or to be queer or to be, X, Y, Z, fill in the blanks. And so we have a protective part that comes in and squashes this curiosity and throws acid in the face of the thing that's triggering the curiosity because it's too much to bear. Yeah, It overwhelms the system because it destroys your whole, it can feel like it's gonna destroy your entire framework of existence. It's that frightening. So yeah. people who are, I mean, this is what war is. This is how I understand war now. It is a feeling of internal threat of your way of existing, your very existence is being questioned. And you can't bear the uncertainty and the possibility that you don't fully trust your decision. And all of this comes from there, given that there's, you know, war going on right now in Ukraine. I'm thinking about this a lot. I think about things from this perspective. And then I think about how might we, and for people who are feeling unsure of like, what can I do or dr- like overwhelmed by their own feelings of suffering and guilt for the people who are far away and suffering. And it's, it's awful. It's terrifying. It's, it's horrifying. I mean, it's 2022 people are, we're still in the pandemic and you're like fucking at war. Like what? Yeah. It's mind blowing. It is mind boggling. Like to understand hospitals and kindergartens and what the, you know, just people fleeing for their yeah. lives. Right? We can't, we get overwhelmed with those feelings. We don't have a whole space for those feelings. We haven't been taught. Um, and so I think about how learning to hold space for that uncertainty is the best thing we can do to resolve conflict in ourselves, to resolve conflict in our immediate relationships, in our world, immediately if we cannot end our own suffering how the hell are we going to end somebody else's and it's again not one and then the other we can do it simultaneously what we are doing now leo is we are co-healing by talking about this and the people listening to this who need to hear it now or in the future right we've been talking for an over an hour and we're wrapping a second i have to go and you have to go um or maybe not (laughs) No, I don't have to anything, actually. Um, I just said that out of force of habit and feeling like I don't want to keep you prisoner here. Um, and thinking about like, people won't listen for more than an hour. I don't know. There's people out there. I listen to long stuff too. I like long form. Oh yeah, um, there's some podcasts that go for like two plus hours, but I, I do have another meeting in about yeah. half an hour. But no, we'll, we'll wrap, yeah. we'll wrap, we'll wrap, we'll wrap. This is good. I should have, I want, yeah, I want to eat some breakfast too. I don't eat breakfast. I eat breakfast in the afternoon. Um, But the thought that whoever is listening, here's also what I've come to trust. Whoever needs to hear this will hear this. That might be one person in the world. That one person today is me. And so I'm already winning. (laughs) Like I already, it's already great, right? 
and that there might be another person, that other person might be you. Great, double wins. And there might be somebody now or in the future who hears this and one little nugget of something lands and psh, like, again, like a fractal, you know, love bomb. It just creates a full cascade and opening and something opens up for them in their life. That's the only reason I do this. Everything I do like crystallized into little seeds, even if they're hour long seeds, right? Yeah. Some of them are like same 60 second videos. I do 60 seconds. Yeah. And people are getting it. Somebody out there is taking notes. She said she listens to them, my videos sometimes 10 times over. She branded them the Hi, It's Reina videos because apparently I start all of them with Hi, It's Reina. So I have a thing. <laughs> I have a thing. And I always have to correct my name because there's no, when the captions, they can't, um, they don't have my name. Anyway, we can have a whole separate e episode about names <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and naming and name mangling and all of that. But um, it's, I, I'm trying to underline how important and vital it's been. I have so much energy right now. And I'm curious too. I think I reckon that you have, the more you've done this and the more kind of openings you've had, the more energy, creative energy is released. Yeah. Available definitely. to you, not released, but it is available to you. There's a sense of aliveness and vitality uh, that I experience and energy, right? I played a show this past weekend and folks half my age were like, how do you have this kind of energy? I'm like, uh, let me tell you what I've been doing. <laughs> and I'll take them in the corner and I talk to them for five minutes. And some people get it. Yeah. They totally, they're like, oh my God, right? they get it. I don't walk out regularly. I describe my lifestyle. Like it's kind of a, it's like a mildly hedonistic lifestyle um, that could be looked at many angles as undesirable and lazy and indulgent. Um, I love it. I also go through long periods of like, I don't talk to anyone. I eat very little. I, right. It's like basic. Yeah. Um, but I will talk to folks like I'm doing now for the express purpose that our connection and what has come out of this connection, neither has, it's not been me or you, it's been me and you yeah. that are manifesting whatever, wisdom and mischief and joy that's coming out of our connection together, right? So it's in the space in between us and all who are drawn to that space, right? Like around a fire are welcome and they can yeah. stay for as long as they want and they can get as close as they wish. They can experiment, right? And then they can step back. And it's important for me that they experience that too. So if you're listening and you're feeling like some of this is drawing you in, some of it's like a little scary or frightening or way or boring you, that's okay. You can come and you can go and you can come back later. And we maybe hear the fire might have, it never dies out. It just moves. It changes form. Yeah. And it's I, always present. I, I love that visual of like the fire. Like you can come sit, chill, or you can go. It's Yeah. It's kind of like when you're at like a party and there's like different conversations you mm -hmm. can like jump in and out of. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's kind of what we have right now with the way that social media is now. Like there's just so much discourse everywhere mm -hmm. around all that's kinds of different ideas mm -hmm. around identity and like living your truth and some stuff will resonate and some stuff will not. So you can kind mm -hmm. of bounce around, stay for as long or as little as you mm -hmm. want for what resonates with you and what doesn't and mm -hmm. go, go about your day. I'm so deeply appreciative of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for making the time and showing up as you exactly as you are today. Thank you, you for having me. This yeah. was, I mean, the, the timing, the timing of this is like perfect. I definitely needed to have a conversation like this. I'm like, dang, maybe I should start my, uh, up a new podcast. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> or maybe this cool. is enough. Maybe this scratches the itch for now. Like who knows? Or yeah, maybe we'll some see. third thing. There's always a third answer. This is the other thing. It's like, what's the third answer? There's always a third answer. Um, That's true. Which is just the question. You never have to answer it. I just like the question. The questions themselves to me are the subconscious medicine for the mind. Ask a yeah. good question and just every day have a different answer to it. And that will show you how much is available. That's it. I like that. And then you're just living in abundance. You're like, wow, I never have to be worried because I can see how many possibilities there are for every given situation. And yeah. then, I mean, I, 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 I'm prolific and I, I make stuff. I don't just sit around. I do sit around a lot, but like, 
Um, Not always. But I'm, I'm also <laughs> very, very creative. Like I actually yeah. create things. I ideate a lot and then I create a tremendous amount and I'm not attached to it because I, yeah. I trust the source now. Yeah. I know there's beautiful. more and and it comes and it goes and it has its own rhythm. It's like a seasonal, you know, it's got its own like wave form. Um, and I'm just kind of there watching. It's like listening to music. Yeah. There's moments of silence. There's moments of noise. There's like drama and joy and yeah, it just feels like I'm watching and listening to a song. So you are a part of the symphony, my friend. Happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you again for having me on the show. I'm like, I'm just, I'm, I'm always a fan of whatever you're doing. So it's just uh, cool to see. It's cool. It's cool to see that there's a, a podcast in the mix now. Yep. It's happening. This is it. I, I maybe even will publish it tonight. Nice. Maybe, maybe by this afternoon, you will be already on the air. It doesn't take, yeah, I don't edit anything. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> it's just going to be like hit publish, like the least amount I can do. Um, Cause this is the most amount, right? This is, this is the meat. I'm like, take all of it. Who yeah. am I to decide what is useful to someone or not? This is all rich for me. So why should I presume that some of it should be thrown away? Who am I to decide for somebody else? I'm That's doing this. Point. We're already, we've already done the cutting and editing and pasting and, and, and we can, that's what this is. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's already done. Yeah. It's already done. That. It's already done. Leo, thank you. I'll talk to you later. All right. Thank you so much. It was really good to see you. And then next time I'm in town, you'll have to finally meet my girlfriend. <gasps> I'm excited. Yeah. I think it's a, what a beautiful love story. Freaking right. So I think so. You guys. <laughs> I'm so happy for y'all. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. All right. Take it easy. All right. You too. See ya. <laughs> Bye.